The Battle of Muzaha is one of the wars fought against the apostates during the Caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq. This battle was fought on September 6, 632 AD, Jamaat al 11 Hijri, between the Caliphate of the Rashida, state of Medina, and the disbelieving Arab tribes. The battle took place in the middle of Muzaha. The tribe of Banu Asad was the center of the infidels in this war. Apart from it, Banu Fazara, Ghadfan, Abbas, and the Ziban tribe also had a central role in the war. In this war, the Caliphate of Rashida, which is the leader of the Muslim army, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was doing it. Apart from this, Adi bin Hatim, the chief of the Tay tribe, was also with Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. He was also in the leadership of the Muslim army. The army of infidels was led by a chieftain of the Banu Asad tribe, Taliha bin Khuwalid. In addition to this, the chief of the Banu Fazara tribe, Aya, was also an important part of the leadership of the infidel army. He led the war. During this war, he was the leader of the army of the infidels. The total number of the Muslims' army was 6,000, while the number of army of the infidel tribes was 35,000. In the war, the Muslims were victorious and the infidels suffered heavy losses. Since this war was fought during the Caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, by that time, the state of Medina had largely become stable. On the other hand, Taliha bin Khawilid had been opposing Islam for a long time. Three months after Uhud, he made a plan to attack Medina for the first time. For this work, he gathered his tribe and the army began to prepare. He thought that the Muslims had suffered enough in the Battle of Uhud and this would be the best opportunity for him to capture Medina. But the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, came to know about Taliha's evil intention and he sent 150 horsemen to thwart his intention before he attacked. Taliha was not aware of this counteraction by the Holy Prophet. May God bless him and grant him peace from him. Before that, 150 Muslim horsemen had reached his head. The Leha ran away from there and the Muslim arrested a group of infidels. After this incident, the Leha bin Khuwilid did not have the same respect in his tribe as before. He stopped in the Islamic activities. After that, he joined the Jews in the trench campaign against the Muslims. He participated in the war, but he had to face failure. After that, in 628 CE, 7 Hijri, the Leha invaded Khabar. During this time, he supported the Jews against the Muslims. He took a complete army from his tribe, Banu Asad. He went to help the Jews of Khabar. In addition to this, he sided with the Jews against the Muslims in many big and small occasions. But every time, he had to face the worst failure. Therefore, the Leha left the Jews in their situation and separated from them. Two years after the conquest of Khabar, the Banu Sa'd tribes also sent a delegation to Medina in the Amul Afar, the year of delegations. The entire Banu Sa'd tribe accepted Islam, but some others Arab accepted the obedience of the Holy Prophet. Like the tribes, they also accepted Islam only for political convenience and did not come with complete faith. Taliha bin Khuvalid also accepted Islam and became the chief of the tribe. As the chief of his tribe, Taliha bin Khuvalid used to make prophecies, make claims, and read poetry. A few days before the death of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, now Zabillah claimed false prophethood and told the people that an angel brings a relation to me too. To show his opposition to the state of Medina, Taliha banished the young Muslim text collector Birar bin al Azwar from the Bani Asad tribe. Being the chief of the tribe and a capable Vavir, the people of Banu Asad tribe believed in Taliha's story. After making a false claim of prophethood, Taliha thought that he should do something so that people would trust him more. Therefore, he said to the people of his tribe, Allah does not want to put your faces on the ground. That is why Allah forbade prostrating in front of him during prayer. The people of the tribe followed him. They just stood up and started praying. After the apostasy of Taliha, his popularity increased and more people began to believe him as a prophet. Like Asr the Ansi and Mazalmai Khadab, Taliha bin Khuwalid also claimed false prophethood 
during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet. After the death of the Holy Prophet, when Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq became the Caliph, he opposed the false claimants of prophethood and started jihad. That is why Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq also sent an army to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid against Taleha bin Khubalid. Taleha's false claim of prophethood was the main cause of the Battle of Bazakha. Taleha bin Khubalid and his companions knew very well that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq will take action against the false claim of prophethood. But instead of being afraid, they started to prepare their army. He chose the location of Samira and gathered his tribe. Banu Asad here. There were very good relations between Banu Asad with the Ghatvan tribe and those people had also accepted Taleha as a prophet. So they also met him at Samira's place. One of the major reasons for Ghatvan's meeting with the Banu Asad tribe was one of their chieftains, Aya bin Hazen, who was a big supporter of Taleha. Some people of the Tay tribe also deviated from Islam and joined Taleha. About 500 people were among them. Apart from this, these apostates of the tribe of Abbas and Zaibun also gathered near Taleha after being defeated by the army of Hazrat Bakr Siddiq. In this way, Taleha started to prepare his army at the place of Samira. At the same time, he received information about the gathering of the apostates at the places of Abrak and Zukhaza and fighting with the army of Muslims. He sent a detachment of his army under the leadership of his brother Habal to help them. He, during his time, took this army and marched from Samira to Bazakha. He declared Bazakha a safe and better place for the war. On the other hand, on behalf of the Muslims, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq also started the preparation of the army. When Hazrat Khalid bin Walid finished the Battle of Zukhaza, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq sent him to suppress the Banu Asad tribe. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was appointed as the commander of the army. Hazrat Sayyid bin As and Hazrat Adi bin Hatim were also with Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. The total strength of the army at the time of departure was a little more than 4,000. When the Muslim army under the leadership of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid left for Bazakha, after reaching there, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was ready to attack the army of Taleha without wasting time. But Adi bin Hatim asked them for a three-day respite so they could bring the people of the tribe back to Islam. After receiving permission from Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, Adi bin Hatim went to his tribe and gathered the elders of the tribe and explained to them that you are making a big mistake by going against the army of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid and war will be imposed on you. His clan understood this and accepted Islam. Along with this, 500 horsemen from the tribe of Tay also joined the army of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. After separating the members of the Tay tribe from the army of the infidels, Hazrat Adi bin Hatim asked Hazrat Khalid bin Walid for their respite so that they bring the Jadela tribe to the path of guidance and they repented. The benefit of this was that another thousand soldiers who belonged to Jadela joined the army of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. On reaching Bazakha, some more people joined his army and its total number reached 6,000. When Hazrat Khalid bin Walid reached the plain of Bazakha, he stationed his army in the southern part and encamped there. The enemy's army was at a short distance from his tent and they could see them from there. The plain of Fazakha was a flat plain with only a few small hills that bordered the plain on one side. It was uneven. The next day after Khalid bin Walid arrived in the field, September 6, 632 AD, Jamadi Lahir, 11 Hijri, the two armies faced each other. On the day of the battle, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid addressed his soldiers and stood in front of his army while Taleha appointed Ayyab bin Abbas as the commander of the army. He sat in a corner with a blanket or a sheet on him. He said to his army, I, now the Billah waiting for an angel from Allah Almighty, will bring revelation. When the two armies were ready for the battle and faced each other, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid attacked from the front with all his strength. He attacked at once with all his forces. They resisted stubbornly and stopped them. But slowly their morale went down and the Muslim army overcame them. But Taleha was sitting in a corner. 
without worrying about the situation. During the war, when the Leher's army started retreating, Arya came to him and asked him whether the revelation was revealed or not. In response, the Leher said right now, I'm waiting. The revelation has not been revealed yet. After some time, Arya again came to Taleha and repeated the same question, but Taleha did not have an answer. Ibn Hibs then went to lead an army and started fighting against the Muslims. They were very close to defeat. Then Arya came to Taleha and asked him about the revelation. So Taleha replied that yes, the revelation was revealed. Arya asked what was said in the revelation. So Taleha replied, I preached a campaign of revelation. Hearing this, Arya's eyes burst with anger and surprise, and he ran to his tribe and started shouting, O oh, people of Azara, Taleha is a liar, run away and save your lives. As soon as they heard this, the resistance of the army of infidels also died and they all started running to save their lives. Taleha had already arranged a fast camel and a horse. He placed his wife on the camel. He sat down and escaped from the battlefield by riding a horse himself. The army of the apostates had been defeated and they had to bear heavy losses. Muslims were victorious under the leadership of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. Thousands of their soldiers were killed and many people were also taken prisoners. Ayya and other great leaders were also taken as a prisoner and presented in the court of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. They repented before him and accepted Islam. After escaping from the battlefield, the Leha went to Syria and settled in the tribe of Bani Qab. Out of winning this battle, the Muslims succeeded in eliminating a large group of apostates. Many people who were apostates repented and entered the realm of Islam and served Islam with a true heart. Khuvarid also stayed only for a few days in Bani Qab when he got the news that his tribe had become Muslim. He also repented and accepted Islam. After that, he also came to Makkah to perform Hajj during the Caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. But Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq did not give any special importance to this despite being informed. During the reign of Hazrat Umar Farooq, the Leha took leave from Banu Qalb and returned to his tribe. He also appeared in the court of Hazrat Umar Farooq, but Hazrat Umar Farooq did not forgive him easily. He went back to his tribe then. When the Muslims attacked Iraq for the third time, the Leha fought with the Muslims in this war, participated as a warrior and commander and fought the war with great bravery and distinction. Later on, he also continued to stick to Islam all his life and continued to serve Islam.